Sister Emmanuel asked me to read you this. Medjugorje, July the 15th, in the year 2023. Dear friends, praise be to Jesus and Mary. On June the 25th, 2023, the visionary Maria received the following monthly message. Dear children, the Most High permits me to be among you, to pray for you, to be a mother to you, and to be your refuge. Little children, I am calling you, return to God and to prayer, and God will bless you abundantly. Thank you for having responded to my call. During her annual apparition to visionary Ivanka, Mary gave us this message. Little children, your prayers are necessary for me. Pray, pray, pray. An inspired and effective remedy against the darkness that envelops the world. Many people are telling me that something like a dark blanket has fallen upon the world to the point where it is difficult to recognize truth from falsehood, good from evil, sincerity from manipulation, true light from illusion, etc. The evil one's snares are proliferating. Where are the spiritual masters who can help the faithful anchor their lives on the rock? Has heaven forsaken us? Of course not. Enough with the discouragement. This difficult period is an interlude before the triumph of Mary, Jesus and the Church, and we have received from Our Lady what is needed to go through this in peace. Our dear Mariam of Bethlehem gives us once again a luminous answer, which has gone much too unnoticed by most believers. This great mystic from Galilee often received words from Jesus for her karma, for priests and also for the faithful. Who among us would not want to be sure that we will live and die in God's peace? Here are some of Jesus' promises. They are gold. Let us be attentive. Whoever calls upon the Holy Ghost shall seek me and find me. His conscience will be delicate as the flower of the field. If it is a father or a mother, peace will be in his family, and his heart and he will be at peace in this world and in the next. He will not die in darkness, but in peace. All priests who once a month will say the votive mass of the Holy Spirit will honor him, and whoever honors him and hears this mass will be honored by the Holy Spirit himself, because he will have the light within him. Peace will be in the depth of his soul. The Holy Spirit will come to heal the sick and awaken those who are asleep. This urgent call of Christ for a monthly Mass in honor of the Holy Spirit is not only for priests. The faithful can ask for it. It would be wonderful if two or three people joined together to have this Mass for the Holy Spirit celebrated and if they attended it. This would be a source of great renewal in the parishes and in the church. Many priests have told me that this practice has changed their lives. This is a burning desire in Jesus' heart. Children quickly get it. At dinner, a father tests his children's knowledge of the Bible and asks, In the Gospel, Jesus says that birds do something that is not right. What is it? What is that? Thomas, five years old, answers immediately, as if it were obvious. It's when they take away the seeds that have fallen on the path. The father was stunned. Then he asked, Do you remember some of the animals that are in the Gospel? Yes, replies Alexander, his twin. There are wolves, snakes, chickens, birds, pigs. This family read a paragraph of the Gospel to their children every day. The father explains it to them in simple words and with enthusiasm. The result is magnificent. For these children, Jesus is part of the family. He is alive. He is powerful. He works beautiful things. We can talk to him. He is not this ancient absentee that he seems to be for the majority of Western Catholics, of Western children.
take advantage of the summer to come to know and enjoy the Word of God. By reading the Gospel, you will find details that you can turn into questions for your loved ones. This will form a very interesting quiz and a good opportunity to talk together about Jesus and share your comments. It will imprint the Word of Life so dear to the Blessed Mother on your soul. For instance, first, which one of the apostles had a twin? John 20, 24. Second, who took Jesus in his arms? Luke 2, 28. Third, what are the five details that the Archangel Gabriel gave Mary about Jesus? Identity before his conception? Luke 1, 32, 33. Fourth, who are the apostles who were present at Jesus' side during the Transfiguration? Matthew 17, 1. Fifth point. Name at least seven Old Testament figures quoted by Jesus. Six. Who were the three people for whom Jesus expressed his admiration? Mark 12, 42, 44. Matthew 8, 10. Matthew 15, 28. Seventh. What object did Jesus make with his own hands during his public life? John 2.15 8. Who had dug the well near to where Jesus met the Samaritan woman? John 4.12 9. What quality of the hens did Jesus mention to give us an example of himself? Luke 13.34 10. Who said charity covers a multitude of sins? First letter of Peter, 4.8. 11. At the wedding in Cana, what did the master of the meal say when he drank the water changed into wine? John 2.10. 12. Jesus said, Go tell this fox. Who was he speaking about? Luke 13.31-38. 13. 31 to 38. 13th, Jesus said, this is the law and the prophets. What's the phrase that he said just before? Matthew seven twelve. Our lady wept profusely when saying to Father Josefko, Dear children, you have forgotten the Bible. When we forget the Bible, we forget Jesus, Father Yozo added. A luminous answer. Our dear Don Dolindo Ruotolo, 1882 to 1970. This exceptional priest, servant of God, could read souls and often astonished his loved ones with his inspired words. This episode testifies to this as a good lesson. At the end of his life, given his poor health, Don Dolindo celebrated Mass at home and people flocked to listen to him. One day, while he was preparing for Mass, two women noticed in a corner of the living room his 90-year-old sister, Christina, sitting in an armchair, totally paralyzed, but who had kept her sharp mind. It so happened that a 20-year-old man had just died in an accident. A stove had exploded. The two women commented, how strange life is, this old woman is sitting there peacefully while that young man died a horrible death. Then Don Dolindo arrived to begin Mass. In the homily he said, Sometimes the Lord's purposes are not understood. Superficially our tendency is to criticize things. You see an old woman in a corner and wonder why she's still alive, while just today a young man died in a terrible accident. But we do not know how many souls this woman throughout her long life has helped to save. We do not know whether by bringing this young man to himself the Lord did not save him from something evil that would have lost his soul forever. The two women looked at each other bewildered. It was as if the priest had heard their whispers and had just given them an answer. Don Dolinda had a blind faith in God's providence. This providence which transforms pain into joy in this wonderful and fathomable embroidery that God is weaving for us. He said, even the things that seem the most negative or painful find a beneficial reason in God's designs.
Cardinal Stanislav Dziwisch, the faithful friend of John Paul II, Archbishop Emeritus of Krakow, visited Medjugorje again on July 11th. During his visit for the 40th anniversary of the apparitions, he said, Medjugorje is a place of great prayer and conversion through prayer, confession and penance, a place of encounter with the Mother of God, where there is the possibility of imploring mercy through her intercession. He also revealed that when he worked at the Vatican, he closely followed what was happening in Medjugorje, adding that Medjugorje was very present in the life of John Paul II. the World Youth Day in Lisbon, let us pray to the little shepherds of Fatima, Jacinta, Francisco and Lucia. May the Blessed Mother's presence be tangible to all these young people who will come from all over the world. She who loves them so much, she who said, young people are my hope, my greatest hope. Then as the mother of all, she gave them this special youth message at the festival. Dear young people, I invite you to put my son Jesus in the first place in your life. Thus you'll have a safe path with him. New not to miss, the audio version of my motherly reports, which someone reads for the visually impaired and all those who prefer to listen rather than read. Dearest Gosper, in the immense tenderness of your motherly heart, please protect us from all evil, guard us from all error, console us in our afflictions, encourage us in our good choices, beautify us with your beauty, teach us to love, to pray and to forgive, so that like you, we may become the joy of the Heavenly Father and the happiness of our brothers, Sister Emmanuel and the community of the Beatitudes. This is a translation from French. Oh, Jesus, Jesus.